Hi students and welcome to our lecture on chapters one and two um, from the textbook, The Digital Writer. Chapter one focuses all on digital writing. So the first thing we're gonna do is define digital writing. Um, digital writing requires electronic technology. That means in order for anything to be considered digital writing, you need to involve a computer, a smartphone, a tablet, digital cameras, electronic pens, graphic design programs, presentation software, optical scanners, or digital snapshots. So all of those things are involved when we talk about the technology needed for digital writing. Digital writing also makes use of the internet. This is not a requirement of digital writing, but there are so many options available um, online for you to make use of. You also have to keep in mind social media, things like Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, all of those social media platforms um, are forms of actual digital writing that use the internet. Digital writing can also rely on multiple codes um, like HTML. We're not really gonna cover that, the scope of this course, um, but it is something to keep in mind. Digital images is also something that is a key when we're talking about digital writing. Because of the ease and prevalence of composing with images in online environments, your audience is expecting to see an image alongside text. So with most of the work that we'll be completing this semester, you will be using digital images. Digital writing should always be thought of as writing with images. Digital writing also operates in more than one medium or genre. So you can think about the more traditional types of writing like proposals, manuals, instructions, memos, letters, emails, reports, but you also have to think about website design, managing social media campaigns, creating digital images, producing videos, and writing other kinds of digital texts. So there are lots of different mediums or genres when we're talking about digital writing. Digital writing also requires research. That is a key uh, point to keep in mind as we progress through the semester. Uh, most of the things that you're going to be doing, it's gonna require some research on your part. The kind of research that you're doing is gonna vary from those that you would do for traditional print-based documents. Um, and we'll get into more of that as we progress through the course. Digital writing also communicates in a very social environment. Digital text can be sent to one recipient or millions of viewers. When you think about traditional writing, for example, you're writing an essay that you're submitting to your instructor, um, digital writing is different in that it is going out on typically the internet. So lots of people are going to view it. You also have to be aware that your document could end, um, how your document could end up or where it could end up and how it might be reappropriated. So if someone looks at something that you have created and you've posted on social media, they can then take that document um, and recreate it or edit it or change it and then send it out to their followers. So definitely keep in mind when you're creating things, um, how it might change over time. Digital writing makes use of rhetorical devices. And we're going to get into that in the next few slides here. <clears throat> but digital writing needs to cover more than just the traditional writing devices like genre, audience, purpose, and so forth. There are other things that you will need to keep in mind as you are beginning to write for a digital audience. Um, digital writing has a digital audience. Uh, the digital audience usually interacts with your documents much more socially and interactively. So again, going back to the essay example, if you submit an essay, um, your instructor is going to write a few comments on it, grade it, hand it back to you. With digital writing, um, your audience is going to interact in a lot more ways. They can share your document. They can um, put comments on your document and have a discussion about it. And again, they can reappropriate it. They can change it so that it fits their needs. And the last thing to keep in mind when we're defining digital writing is that it remains in a constant state of revision. There's always something that's going to change, especially when you're pushing something out into a social atmosphere. Um, things are constantly changing and your writing is going to constantly need to be revised. All right, that sums up chapter one. Let's talk a little bit about chapter two, which is digital rhetoric. This is going to be something important to keep in mind for the entirety of the course. 
<clears throat> so we'll start out by discussing what rhetoric actually is. Rhetoric refers to the study and uses of written, spoken, and visual language. It investigates how language is used to organize and maintain social groups, construct meanings and identities, coordinate behavior, mediate power, produce change, and create knowledge. Rhetoric is about strategic choices and approaches to communication, whether textually, verbally, or even orally and visually. When we communicate to different types of audiences about the same topic, we make strategic decisions on what details to include or omit, what types of evidence to support, to use, and so on. An example that I'll use for this is, let's say that you go out and you have a wild weekend partying. The way you tell that story to your parents is going to differ from how you tell that story to your closest friends. So what you're doing in that moment is you're making rhetorical choices on what you're gonna share with each specific audience. <clears throat> and when we're talking about rhetoric, that is uh, summing up kind of what it is that we're examining. So in writing, we have this thing called the rhetorical situation. And that is when you evaluate the strategies that you're going to use to formulate a piece of writing. So thinking about how and what you communicate, um, you as the writer, the author, creator, you're known as the rhetor. You're the person doing the writing. You need to keep in mind the audience, including the primary, secondary, and tertiary audiences. When we're talking about digital writing, um, we have our primary audience that we're directing our text to. But again, that audience is going to share that with some of their friends. And now you have a secondary audience um, and so on and so forth. You also need to consider the topic of the communication, the purpose, um, which can often be broken into a primary, secondary, and tertiary purpose, um, and the context and culture within which the communication is taking place. So, you know, are you sharing this communication in the workplace? Are you sharing this communication on social media? These are things that you need to keep in mind as you're designing the type of uh, digital writing that you'll be doing at when we're talking about rhetorical situations is looking at the rhetorical triangle. And you can see here that there are three things that we need to keep in mind. There's ethos, pathos, and logos. And you can see that ethos deals with credibility and ethics. Pathos deals with emotions and feelings. And logos deals with logic and re reason. These are three things that we're going to cover a little bit more in depth as we continue in this presentation. So looking closer at the rhetorical triangle, we can see that when we're talking about um, ethos, that is Greek for the word ethics, um, but it also has been made to represent the credibility of the person making the communication. So that refers to you directly as the writer. Then we have pathos. Um, pathos is the Greek term for emotion, but it has been made to represent how an audience feels or experiences a message. The appeal of um, pathos makes a person feel excited, sad, angry, motivated, jealous, or any other number of emotions that you can use to persuade them. So as you're thinking about crafting your digital writing, how are you gonna appeal to the audience's emotions? And then lastly, we have logos. Logos is the Greek term for logic, but it has been made to represent facts, research, and other message elements. So you use logos to convince your audience that what they are hearing or seeing is well-researched, well-built, or otherwise worth their time. So thinking about your communication, how are you going to use research to let the audience know that you actually you know, know your stuff, you're a reliable um, person? And the last thing that is very important when we're talking about digital writing specifically is rhetorical timing, also known as kairos. Um, this is a very important rhetorical element. Think about how to make different kinds of rhetorical appeals in the right time and place. So think about where someone might be when they're receiving or looking at your communication. Um, think about the timing. Think about what, is, what else is happening in the world or their environment that can impact how someone receives um, the text that you are putting out there. Um, think about how timing could help you avoid pitfalls that might hurt the content and delivery of your message. 
And then lastly, Cairo signifies the best, most strategic moment in which one should communicate. If we go back to that example about sharing your wild night of partying with your parents versus um, your friends, um, you have to consider when is the best time to share this information with your parents? Would it be best to share it after they've worked you know, a 12 hour day and they come home and they're tired? Or would it be best to share this information um, when they're refreshed and you know, ready to, to concentrate? So you, again, make that rhetorical decision on when you want to um, share that information with your parents. And that is key to how they receive the information and probably key to whatever type of punishment you're going to receive for your wild night of partying. Um, this concludes our slideshow on chapters one and two. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to email me. And again, I apologize for any background noise that was present uh, during this presentation.